time lapse time. So hopefully you enjoy my version of time lapse because basically what I can do is quickly increase the speed of things and kind of show you how I've been sculpting without taking 12 years to do it. So here I'm just pulling out these forms for the lips. And notice that I used that edge loop right there uh, in between those to kind of separate the two lips out. So it's very important to know that the wireframe is very useful. So I'm just trying to figure out where the mouth is going to stop and start. So right about there it's going to stop. Just establishing those eyes a little bit better. always rotating around, always trying to figure out what the forms look like up against each other. Instead of working with just one view, you always kind of rotate out and just work on the profile of the character. Here I'm deciding what kind of nose I want. I went with the Boston Bull Terrier nose. Or bat nose. Okay, so a lot of this is just the same tools over and over again. I'm using uh, standard to puff up the character and then smooth to smooth it back just a little bit. And then every once in a while I jump into move. So if you, as long as you know three tools, uh, you can pretty much do just about the whole sculpture <laughs> just with those three tools. Okay, so... So here I'm making a poly group. You know, I, I just want to take a have the head connected to the body and have that as a separate group. So again, that's like shift control. That's shift control alt right there. Bit of a hard time getting used to it in the new ZBrush 4 because it used to be a little bit different. It used to be like shift and control, let go of shift, and that was hiding it. So there I have just this as a poly group right here. And now I have the ability to hide uh, the body structure just like that. significant after that so I'm just gonna kind of sculpt a little bit more now I'm trying to blend in this balloon animal body to a head that has some kind of form to it And I do that at a very low level and then work my way up and then just like I did the head. Again, be be very careful about, you know, developing a character all on one level. You know, if you if you I can't stress it enough, new students will do that. They'll go to level seven and they'll work all on level seven and they never take advantage of any of the other levels. So they never back down and just uh go ahead and 
remove some stuff and then go back up in levels. Here I'm putting some muscle noise in, I call it. Uh, anytime, anytime you have a fictitious creature, I'll borrow anatomy from a human and then kind of throw in my own mix. And I still think about things like, okay, so this arm lifts up. I'm going to have to have some some kind of muscle, caped over muscle, just like a human in that area. If you ever notice your arms, your arms have like a large variety of uh, free motion so that's what I usually do is kind of think of what kind of motion does a creature have and then I'll borrow that form from some kind of animal whether it be human or uh, cat or whatever you don't have to reinvent the wheel you just have to kind of look at what wheels exist That's Again, same MO, standard brush, smooth, move. I have to lay down this initial sketch. This is my sketching phase. And once I get done with the sketching phase, I'll use like clay tube brush to kind of go in there and add some texture and stuff to it. And I'll also uh, use my pinch and move and flatten brush to, to go in there and then really sculpt out the forms. But for right now, this is all about what are things flowing into what other things. How how did how did the forms flow together? work out the tummy region of this character leaving out any sex of the character again some more muscle noise Alright, I'm going to stop this and move to the next video.